Let's jump into another one. This one has to do with positioning and storytelling. Right. So this is a this is a smaller company, and you know we were we were about thirty million in revenue and great product. This was a this was kind of like a crossing the chasm, innovative product in a new market. And just on the back of this amazing product, uh, the company grew you know, really fast to, to 30 million. And they really didn't have that much of a marketing function. So these people, this was in California and these people were, you know, PhDs from MIT, Berkeley and Stanford. They were really, really smart technical people that, that started the company and were running the company. And the product was something called WAN optimization, which is wide area networking optimization. So the idea of making data and applications beam across wide area networks to allow people to access these applications and work faster and collaborate faster. So it was just at the right time, right place, right product, right time, when cloud was kind of the new thing, Mark Benioff was pounding the drum on cloud. And another huge kind of trend was IT consolidation, where companies were consolidating multiple data centers into fewer data centers. So you know, servers were moving further away from people and branch offices that were using them. And cloud was a big thing and cloud-based applications was a big thing. So there is this big, hairy problem that CIOs were facing where they were doing these things and they were kind of moving to the cloud, but it was causing a big problem with all the knowledge workers distributed around the company and around the world that they couldn't access this, these applications and data fast enough. So they were just really upset and screaming at their CIO. And this product really solved that problem. But we were competing against very large networking companies that were ingrained into the CIO's office, like Cisco, for example. And they said, well, we have, we have a solution for you just like this, but it wasn't. So we had the innovative solution. The, the issue was or the the opportunity for us was how do we grow faster so the company was kind of positioned as this technical solution WAN optimization and their story really engaged and appealed to network engineers so they were down at the lower left lower ends of the company and we wanted to get to the cio how do you get to the cio well it requires a different positioning and a story that is customer in versus product out. And, mm-hmm. you know, when our sales reps would go to the CIO or try to go to the VP level or CIO, they would say, what, WAN optimization? Why don't you just take that to my network engineers and leave, yeah. leave me alone? <laughs> like, you're wasting my time. I've got these big problems I'm trying to solve. And so we went through a whole exercise, you know, where we, again, interviewed a bunch of CIOs and really understood what their top five funded initiatives were, and then created a story that aligned with those initiatives. And, you know, the biggest issue that they had was how do I make cloud work, you know, in this new environment when bandwidth wasn't as plentiful and we're doing IT consolidation and my CIO was breathing down my, my neck about cloud, cloud, cloud. And so we told a different story, which had to do with, you know, we've got from the WAN optimization company to the cloud infrastructure performance company. You can't do cloud without our company. And then we told the story as to why. And so you don't mention your product until slide 10 or 12. It's all about setting up a problem. And, you know, today's approaches are falling flat, but there's a better way. And these are your requirements and here's your solution. And Smart companies like you have figured it out and you just tell that story. And we created a really great story that resonated and we rolled it out to the entire sales organization and throughout all of our marketing. But the other thing that a lot of Silicon Valley companies don't get is the difference between company positioning and brand strategy. They think it's the same thing. And sometimes they go to advertising agencies for company positioning and messaging like, I was just talking to you about, and they end up with something else. They end up, they end up with like a marketing kind of brand story. And so I found the most success by starting with company positioning and messaging, which addresses a 
big problem of your economic buyer, not your buyer today, who's your buyer tomorrow, and tell that story. And with that foundation, you can go into an exploration of your brand strategy. And then the, the brand strategy that fell out of that, which really kind of ignited the marketing and helped us generate just a bunch of leads and, and really create a brand that went beyond the rational reasons to buy it and went into the emotional reasons to love it. And that was this whole idea. And this is where we used a, a really great little agency in the Bay Area to come up with this idea of this company, you know, brings the world closer together. And it was about like busting down boundaries and doing business everywhere in real time. And tagline that came out of it was think fast. And, it, and then the, there was a great campaign that came out of it that won, won all kinds of awards that was, imagine a world where San Francisco and Singapore come together as one and it's San Francisco poor. Or Mumbai and Boston become Mumboston. Yeah. Or Dusseldorf and Philadelphia becomes Dusseldelphia. So it was a city mashup yeah. campaign. And these skylines had come together on digital and and then people loved that and it became a game you know like internally at the company okay come up with other mashups that we can use in our advertising and then we asked our customers to come up with mashups that we could use in our advertising so it was it was an example of company positioning and messaging that really engages with the senior buyer and dramatically accelerates sales and marketing on top of it that leverages that company positioning to a brand story or an idea that is a perception of a company, you know, that we, that was woven through all of our kind of marketing and the result, you know, we went from 25 million to 400 million in three and a half years. So that was, that was a ride. That was definitely the, yeah, there's so many, so many things I'd like about this case study. I mean, one is we've, you've hit on themes of product out, customer in, you know, that's the, that's the classic challenge of most technology companies is their DNA is just product, product, product. And it's almost uncomfortable for many of them to think outside that, that framework. And then I think the other thing I really like is that you just went and talked to people and, and figured out what their pain is. I'm a huge believer in pain driven ideation or strategies because ultimately, you know, the role of great B2B marketing in my mind is for the audience to kind of learn about you in a way where they go, this company totally gets my problems. And it's not even, you know, you're not even at the product level yet. Like it's still just, you start that relationship by saying, these guys get me. Now I'm open to learn more, you know, like to your point now on slide 10 or whatever it is. Now you can, you can have the actual product story, but if you have that story too soon, people just, they don't want to hear it. Like we're, we are, as buyers of these things, we're all very good at hearing it and then going, I'm tuning it out. I don't want to go there yet. 